All right, guys, this is a bankrupt hippo coming at you this morning. So um, I'm going to give you a little sneak peek into one of my side hustles, which is sourcing shoes from Ross, Just for Less, and other good retailers as well. So today I'm going to show you what the process looks like about when I someone buys the shoes and then I have to go ahead and package them up and send them off. So what we need is you're obviously going to need the shoes that you've bought and then have been sold. I'm gonna, You're going to need one disinfecting wipe, not any more than one because otherwise that's just going to be any wasteful. A scrub brush, a toothbrush would probably work out okay as well. Then of course you're gonna need some supplies like your packaging tape. And for shoes I recommend a plastic bag and obviously do not forget your bubble wrap. And most importantly, I cannot stress this enough, your morning coffee. Ha, <laughs> just kidding, unless you really love coffee like I do. So, all right, so step one is right before I like to wrap them up in bubble wrap and put the plastic bag over it, the first thing I do is when I buy shoes from Ross Just for Less, I always check to make sure that the price that I bought them for is not at the bottom of the shoes. So for example here, Ross likes to do this a lot where they'll put the pricing of the shoes in Sharpie at the bottom of it. And when you ship these to your customers, you don't want them to know what that is because they, they, it causes problems. Just trust me, you just don't want that on your hands. So the first thing we're going to do is to kind of solve that problem is we're going to grab one disinfecting wipe. If I can get it out with one hand, that's the hardest part. I'm just going to put you guys down for one second here. Okay, now that we got the disinfecting wipe, what we're going to do is we're going to turn over the shoe. We're going to just start to kind of slowly get at the shoe a little bit. We're just going to kind of loosen up the uh, the Sharpie. Um, I would recommend putting a ton of pressure on using your nails a little bit. If your nails and pressure aren't enough to get this off, like in my case, it's not even close. That's where the scrub brush is going to come in. So I'm just going to get the Sharpie nice and saturated. Yep, still, it's starting to come off a little bit, but um, it's kind of clear that we're going to need a little bit more uh, deadly force, if you will. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you guys down next to me, and I'm just going to kind of show you the process step by step as to me getting off some of the sharp. It's actually coming off pretty good, so let's see. I'm just going to put you guys down, and then I just drop my shoe. Hooray. Okay, so... Guys, right here somewhere. Ah, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna put you guys down. I'm gonna grab the shoe, the bacterial wipe that I just dropped off. So I'm just gonna keep, kind of keep at it like this. Just keep scrubbing hard, keep scrubbing. And now you even see like some of the um, antibacterial material kind of seeps through. That's not a big deal. That's totally fine. It's still starting to come off, so you might not even need the toothbrush or the scrub brush because if you just keep at it, it starts to come off. But if it's being a pain in the butt, I like to get a good scrub brush like this. Any brush will really do. I actually use mine that are used on like tile floors, and that works pretty well. You just kind of do small, circular, quick movements up and down, change the direction. And you can start to see it come off just a little bit here. I'm going to put on more of the antibacterial um, liquid. Just keep at it, just keep at it, and eventually it will come off. It just takes a little bit of elbow grease is all. Um, the reason why I recommend not letting the letting the price show at the bottom of these is people make the claim like, oh, if you bought these for 55, they should only be 55. If, you, if we bought and sold these at the same price we sold them for, there'd literally be no incentive to sort shoes or do what we do. So just a part of business is all. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call it lying, I just, you know, keeping it real. We took the time that, we took time out of our schedule in order to find these and do research, so we like to be compensated for those kinds of things, but, and then see it's almost off, getting close to there, just a little bit left, let's give it a little bit of a tougher scrub at this point. And look, we're just about good to go. See, there's no mark left. There's no 55. I actually scratch that. There's one right here. I'm just going to finish getting that off. There we go. Now we're getting it. Okay. So then that about does it for that. Now, I already did this process with the uh, with the other shoe that I got, so you can see here. 
there's no price at the bottom of it, which is exactly what we want. So now these shoes are pretty much ready for packaging. I'm just gonna dry this other shoe I have right here that I just got soaked with anti-material. So, we can dry it off. And then perfect, so, <laughs> I just dropped you guys again. Okay, so now these are pretty much ready to start being wrapped in bubble wrap, things of that nature. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and grab our bubble wrap. There it is. So much of it, I'm glad I bought a ton of it the other day. And I'm just gonna cut out, and what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna wrap each shoe in the bubble wrap, one at a time. Once I have the right amount, I'm gonna make a little cut, and then I'll do the same to the next shoe. So I'm gonna put you guys down again, go through that process once more, once I get this camera set up right. There we go. I'm just going to anchor it a little bit. Hi, guys. Okay, so, I'm going to clear off a little bit of room. I'm going to get these shoes out of the way for now. Not for long, though, of course. Alright, so we're good on the antibacterial stuff. We won't need that much longer, so that's all fine. I'm just going to adjust it a little bit so you guys can see a bit better. Okay, so now I'm gonna start to unfold a lot of this just a little bit. And of course you always want to have the bubbles of your bubble wrap on the outside. So like you can see here, if you look a little bit closer, the bubbles are on the outside. If you look on this side, it's flat. Um, the reason being is if things puncture, if you did it the other way around, the amount of air that would go through wouldn't protect the shoes as well as you'd want it to. So, Bubbles on the outside is the moral of the story. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the first shoe. This is the shoe I cleaned off earlier. And we're just going to place it in the middle. And we're just going to fold it over like this. And we're just going to roll, really. We're just going to roll, just like this. Just like one and a half rolls will do, I just like to leave one layer of bubble wrap around it. And then you can either rip or you can cut it. I'm just going to rip it just for uh, time's sake. And now this is kind of where our handy dandy tape is going to start to come into play. So, um, got my roll of tape and I'm just going to secure, I'm going to secure the bubble wrap around it. See, I've got this kind of, this layer going. I'm just going to do one of these numbers. And just like that. You don't need it to be much more secure than that. Not really necessary. You can kind of tape down some of this, uh, these loose areas if you want, just to make the packaging look a little nicer, I think I'll do that. So just grab another piece of tape. So we're gonna package that up just nicely. And that kind of protects the front a little bit more too. Um, leaving the front and back exposed, kind of like how I have here. Like I said, since they're shoes, it's not really too sensitive an item, so it's not really a big deal. Um, if you guys want a little extra protection, this is a method that I've seen other um, resellers use, and that's using plastic bags around the shoes. So I have here two plastic bags, any plastic bags, or even paper bags would be fine. Just like this, you know, just a good old plastic bag. And what you can do is you kind of just dunk your shoe into the plastic bag, wrap it around nice and good, and I recommend taping it down just for, uh, just for neatness sake. Um, Buyers like to have nice, neat-looking products, of course. I don't buy them. I do, too. So um, I always like to treat my customers right because they're doing a lot for me, and without them, I wouldn't be able to exist. So and we're just going to tape that down, and voila. You're going to do this to each of the shoes, just like I have now. So just for um, just for another walkthrough's sake, maybe I'll go through it a little bit faster. So step one, get your shoe. Step two, your bubble wrap gonna kind of extend out the bubble wrap. I'm gonna get a couple pieces of tape ready just so make the process a little bit smoother. Okay. All right, so we got our shoe. We're gonna put it at the base of our bubble wrap. We're gonna start to roll it a little bit. I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom here and grab it. I'm just gonna wrap it around one time. Just one time, just like that. And then I'm just gonna tear where the bubble wrap kind of ends. So let's give it one good tear. Bubble wrap usually tears pretty finely and neatly. Like I said, if you're more of a precision kind of person, I totally get it. 
you can use scissors to cut this as well but not absolutely necessary just like the scrub brush isn't absolutely necessary you can use a toothbrush if you want which dollar store comes in handy as well for those kinds of things i get a lot of my bubble wrap and packaging stuff at harbor freight sorry harbor freight because it's just more of a good value a little bit cheaper plus i have coupons hooray Okay, so then I got the first piece of tape around the top here. Then I'm just going to kind of fold over this loose um, bubble wrap just to make it a little bit more refined. Just kind of fold it over like that. I'll grab the piece of tape that I made earlier. Look at that, that's kind of nice. And then I'll use the third one just for security's sake. So, and then I will grab the other plastic bag that I got going. Oops, I'm missing the other one. Let me just grab one real quick. Get the other one, just another piggly wiggly one, and then we'll just kind of toss it in right here. I put the shoe so it kind of stands up on its side to the bottom of the bag, and then what I'll do is I'll fold over this bag like this, and then all areas of the shoe are covered. I mean, since this, since I'll be shipping in a box, um, and shoes aren't really too sensitive of a material, it's not like an electronic or something like that, we can kind of get away with not having a ton of bubble wrap or things like that. But, but like I said, um, making sure the the products look nice and packaged and secure. Customers really appreciate that, so. There you go. So now it's all nice and refined. You can see the shoes kind of start to folding into their own. So I'm gonna pick you guys back up again and we'll go through the final process of putting these in the box and getting them ready to be shipped off. Okay, so, shoe number one. Shoe number two. Both of them are all ready to go. And of course, coffee. Phenomenal. That's phenomenal. Never gets old. First cup of the day, so we're still doing all right. Okay, so let me grab my box. The biggest tip I can give you guys, if you're curious as to where to find good size boxes, especially for shoes, a lot of Amazon boxes end up coming in handy in this case. Um, if you have friends who frequently shop at Amazon, I know I've got an absolute ton. Ask them for the boxes. Half the time they're just throwing them away in recycle bins. Uh, dumpster diving, I know that sounds kind of weird, but you know, it works. Or if you just go up and ask companies, or if you put out an ad on Facebook Marketplace saying, hey, I need boxes, people will come through for you, I'm telling you. They're happy to get rid of that kind of thing. Okay, so, now we got this box right here. It was broken down previously, you can kind of see. I've got like some clear tape over where the Amazon tape was, that's fine. I just did one long strip of tape across the bottom right here. One is fine, if you want to be more secure, you can kind of tape it right here, kind of like you see. Um, horizontally, but you don't have to. Um, doesn't, I guess, really hurt to do such a thing. So, okay, so now we're just gonna kind of fit them snugly into the box, gotta make sure they're not sticking to each other. So, this is a bit of a taller box, so I'm just gonna put them in. I was going to put them in right side up, but I'm actually gonna rotate them a little bit. I'm gonna rotate them just like you would see in a normal shoe box that you get from the store, but it all really depends on however you can fit it in there is what I would recommend. So now there's shoe number one, shoe number two. The, the box isn't quite big enough to fit both of the shoes on um, side to side like that. So I'm just going to put them one on top of the other, but in the same direction you'd see in a shoe box. So now they're pretty much ready to go. They fit in just nicely. They might fit a little bit snugly. That's okay as long as they get to the, the, the buyer undamaged, not a big deal. So now we can kind of close this off. Sorry, I'm using you guys one handed here. And then pretty much all we have to do is get the piece of tape from here, at this point where my thumb is, all the way across to around to the edge of the box, right where this piece of tape ends too. So that's kind of a nice thing about Amazon boxes too, is they can provide you a good reference point as well. So it's kind of nice. And that is exactly how you, sh um, you ship the shoes that you sold at Ross Dress for Less, Goodwill, otherwise. I love Ross Dress for Less for shoes because you can often find some really good stuff there. Um, thanks so much for watching, guys. This is the Bankrupt Hippo signing off. If you haven't checked out the rest of my channel, I would really greatly appreciate it if you could. Welcome to Hippo Nation, and I hope to see you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching.